Hello, in this video I will be teaching you about the various types of firearm devices and the kind that you should get. In my other video, How Firearm Systems Work, I mentioned addressable and conventional firearm systems. Addressable firearm, firearm systems have all of the initiating devices on one circuit, and each of the initiating devices has something called a monitor module, either integrated into it or, t or connected to it. And what this does is every monitor module has a set number on it and the control panel can read that number and if the device were to be damaged or activated the control panel can detect that and report it another good thing about addressable systems is that it displays not only the zone but the type of device like pulse station or smoke detector and the exact location of the device like front door or rear you know mechanical room or whatever you want to call it <laughs> conventional systems just tell you the zone and sometimes you, if you have an intelligent one with a screen on it, you can program it to, uh, like, say, like, the name of the zone, like, bedroom area, or whatever. But with all conventional firearm systems, all the zone, each zone has its own circuit. And whenever a device on that circuit trips, the zone goes into alarm. And if another device were to trip, the, the zone does not re-alarm. And it does not tell you, you know, again, if any other device is activated. So it's limited. <laughs> Now moving on, there are two types of fire notification appliances, two wire and four wire. Four wire has one uh, circuit for the strobe and one circuit for the horn, like this one right here. See where it says strobe and audible. By the way, all the uh, SFC loops, IDC loops, NACs, NAC stands for notification appliance circuits, horn and strobes and bells, chimes, strobes, things like that, they're all notification appliances. Things like smoke detectors and pulse stations are initiating devices, and if they're on conventional systems, they're called initiating device circuits, and if they're on addressable systems, they're called SLC loops, signaling line circuits. Now, um, two wire horn strobes, let me find one. Here's a two wire horn strobe, there's just one, uh, one circuit for the horn and the strobe. Now, the reason why there would be two strobes, one for the strobe, one for the horn, is because whenever the firefighters arrive or the building managers at the control panel and they need to look for the fire, they will hit the alarm silence button. And they, this silences the horns and the audible devices so that they can concentrate and they can talk to other people you know, through their walkie-talkies or CB radios or whatever. And it keeps the strobes flashing so people can you know, still be notified of a fire. Now, normally with four wire horn strobes, the control, panel, the control panel will just cut off the power to the audible circuit. But two wire horn strobe, it still gets the power for the strobe, but it somehow intelligently tells the horn strobe to cut off the horn power, the power of the horn. So it doesn't physically cut the power; it just tells the horn strobe to stop, you know, sounding the horn. And there are two wire and four wire uh, smoke detectors. Um, four wire smoke detectors with, they get, they have one circuit for the power and another one for the zone. Two wire smoke detectors, they get the power directly from the zone. And if they are, uh, addressable smoke detectors, they just get their power from the SLC loop. Pull stations, they're all two wire. Some you push in, pull down. Some you just pull down. Some you have to lift and then pull down. This one's not designed for firearms, but it's, it's an exact replica of a firearm one. It's just not red. Another thing to keep about when buying uh, notification appliances is that some are horns, some are strobes, some are chimes, some are chime strobes, some are bells, some are bell strobes, some are electronic horns, some are mechanical horns. Mechanical horns, they basically have a metal plate in there, and there's like a little plastic thing, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's like a little plastic thing that vibrates against, and this little yellow thing is a vibrator, and it vibrates against the metal plate and make an obnoxious headache causing noise. These are being phased out because they cost too much vibrations and they can interfere with like uh, data and communication circuits like the SLC loop and internet, ethernet, cable uh, circuits, telephone lines. These are electronic horns. They have something called a piezo. What a piezo is, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's like a small little circle thing. All it needs is electricity and it will make its own high-pitched noise. There are uh, chimes that use piezos, but they are 
really eye pitching annoying. There are chimes where it's like it's like a physical like metal plate. It's kind of like the mechanical ones. It's, it's like a mechanical chime, and there's something like beating against it. And it makes a, a nice chime noise. Then, then there's my favorite kind, like this. This is an annoying, unpleasant chime noise, but this is like an actual speaker. What so what happens is this little wide thing is a tone generator. All it needs is electricity for, for you know from the audible circuit, and it will generate a tone and then play it through the speaker. So some have multiple like this one. You can, you can adjust the tone and the volume. This one you can adjust. You can uh, change the uh, like the sound. If I say like on this one you can have three, you look in the instruction manual and it'll tell you which way to flip the switches. But this one you can have. It imitate a bell. You can have it play like a siren noise, a whoop noise. You can have it play a horn noise, a different you know, like a pitched tone. This one has two tones on it. This one has uh me has an electromechanical horn. It's basically an electronic horn that imitates a mechanical horn. It has a normal electronic horn. It has a chime and it has a slow whoop. So some of these are multi uh, multiple tones. You have to do your research on them. Um, some are white, some are red, some have strobes, some don't. Some are designed for ceiling mount, like this one. Here's an example. These are both. Whoops, these are both the same thing as you can see on the back. I already showed you this one. This one is circle. This one is a circle because it's designed for ceiling mount and it's white, it has no strobe. And like this one, which is square, designed for wall mount, and it is red and has a strobe. And then all ceiling mount ones are white and don't have strobes. You know, they can be vice versa. This one right here is is like wall mount has a strobe and it's white. Um, this one right here is actually called a mini horn. Unlike normal horns like that, these mini horns are usually smaller. I'm not sure which way you're supposed to flip this. But either way, mini horns are usually smaller and they usually generate a very very high pitched noise. If you have a smoke alarm, which is basically one of those like circle uh, things on the wall as a test button and as an idle battery usually. And whenever it detects smoke, it makes its own uh, high pitched noise. Mini horns are usually more high pitched than those. This kind is not high pitched. This kind is, has the same piezo as a normal horn. So, um, whenever you're designing a hobby system, keep in mind like which kind of pull station you want, which color and kind of notification appliance. You have to keep that kind of stuff in mind. Um, there. There are different brands such as Firelight. Okay, these brands make fire control panels and pull stations. Uh, Firelight, Silent Night, Notifier, Honeywell, and FCI. Because uh, Honeywell owns all those companies. So, like, they all make this type of pull station, this type of pull station, but they just have different brand names on them. And then the companies that make smoke detectors. Oh wait, sorry, and uh, with the control panels, there's also uh, Faraday, Siemens, Pyro Cerberus Pyrotronics, um, Simplex, EST, Edwards, um, companies like that. The companies that I recommend buying are either Firelight or Silent Night. I recommend Firelight the most, because these can be found anywhere. And unlike Simplex uh, products, you don't have to buy them directly from Simplex. As like a contractor, and when you buy Simplex products, you not only have to be like a contractor, but you have to have a service to come with it. Otherwise, you won't be able to get it up and running. EST is kind of like that, but Firelight is the brand that they sell like everywhere, every firearm distributor and firearm store. And when you buy them, you own them. You get all the you know the passwords and everything. Firelight control panels. Um, if you're really, really poor, get the Firelight MS2. It's it's a two-zone one. It has only one NAC, so you have to use two wire devices. Um, you could use four wire devices. It's just the show would also stop flashing once you hit the arm silence button. Um, there's MS4. has two NACs, four zones. Same thing as MS2. There's the Firelight MS5 and 10. Are, they're also conventional, but they're intelligent. They have a screen and a keypad. and You can program them with the USB cable with your computer. And for the keypad, um, that that's a lot of wiring, and they're more expensive. They four X, by the way. They're more expensive than the Firelight MS ninety fifty UD, which is a small addressable one. It has a screen just like the MS ten and MS five. The only difference between that them is it has 
two NACs instead of four NACs, and you cannot program it with the with your computer through the USB port. So um, there's also the MS ninety two hundred UDLS and the MS ninety six hundred UDLS, which are really large firearm addressable firearm control panels. So MS ninety fifty UD is the good way to go if you're um, slightly slightly experienced with the firearm systems and you need a good deal of money. Make sure to get addressable devices with it, they're more expensive, or get monitor modules which are still expensive and you can use conventional devices with it. EST, Edwards, everything else I told you about, uh, you have to buy them usually off eBay and they're hard to find. So Some places you can buy off eBay is, something. Uh, the places that you can buy alarms off of are is eBay, uh, Total Computing Life Safety, TC Life Safety, typed in on Bing or Google. And home the home security store typed in on being Google also. <coughs> Sorry, my throat was sore. And um, so yeah, those are three good places you can buy them from. eBay usually, UB, eBay usually has the best selection and the cheapest prices. And they have uh, the buyer protection, so in case you buy like a product from a uh, bad seller, you can go to eBay and they'll um, you know refund your money from the seller. They'll take your money. They'll give your money back. Take it from the seller. Um, so yeah, uh, there most devices that have a vertical uh, strobe like this right here. They're old kind. They're the old kind. The new kind like this has the horizontal strobe because they realize that horizontal strobes provide a better light output. Some with the circle strobes are usually also pretty new. So yeah, that, that's um. I, th I think that's everything you need to know. So if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. So uh, make sure to do your research before buying everything. Ho hopefully I helped you. If you need to, go on some forums, like the uh, Fire Panel forums. Just type in the Fire Panel on Bing or Google, and it should bring that up. That's a good one. It's a good place to go to. They're very understanding there. Unlike the Davidson Fire Alarm forums, they uh, don't get really mad at you when you, you know, do risky things with your fire alarm. So if you are going to install a fire system, it's usually a good idea to run your wires through conduit or wire mold. You don't have to. I mean, we should according to code, but most people just leave them kind of touching the wall. So I will upload a video about fire alarm safety and stuff. So um, thank you for watching. Make sure to look for my other videos. Click on the pull station to return to the main menu. If you return to the main menu, you can watch other videos like how to wire up and install a fire alarm system, and you can also learn the safety precautions and hazards with fire alarms. Go ahead and click on the full station. Not sure what you're waiting for. Click on the full station to go back to the main menu.